In this video traders, we are gonna look at how to identify day trading levels on the FTSE 100. Stay tuned. Hey guys, everyone, welcome to your right. So this video is sponsored by Core Spreads Australia. I'm gonna check out their Core Trader 2 platform. I'm gonna use their Core Trader 2 platform, should I say, to analyze areas that we're looking to potentially do business on the FTSE 100, which is called the UK uh, 100, UK rolling 100, rolling cash within the Core Spreads Australia platform. Right, there's a link to those guys in the description below. If you wanna check them out, feel free. Okay, so. When we're looking for day trade opportunities, we have got to be so mindful and cautious about the levels we get involved in. What we don't want to be doing is shooting from the hip. We don't want to be logging in, looking at the chart and going, it's a long, it's a short. What we need to be doing, not only for our own discipline and management and all this kind of stuff, is we need to be prepared and have an idea of what levels we're looking to do business at. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean as soon as it gets to the level, we're gonna hit short, we're gonna hit a long, but what it does mean is we wanna see you know, how, what, what time the market has got there. Is it early in the morning? Is it late in the afternoon? What's in the day has it got there? Loads of other things we want to look at, which will determine whether we want to take the trade. What's happened the prior day? You know, what's happened the prior week? Okay, so we've hit a high level after we've gone up day, up day, up day, up day, up day, up day, and it's early in the morning on a gap up. Now, would you want to buy that? Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe that's an exhaustion gap. And so that's very different from perhaps something that's almost hit a level, then congested for a few days, and now has broken out on news and is doing another leg. Now, that might be a breakout. So you can start to see it very much depends on how levels are hit, what the chart pattern has done before as to whether we're going to get involved or not, or even we're going to take a long or we're going to take a short. Now, we might have a bias in one direction or another, which means that, okay, we're biased long, but even if it's not a long, then we're not gonna take a short. So we could have that as well. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is gonna go over to the Core Trader 2 platform, check out their charts, do some analysis. Uh, and obviously this is this is filmed uh, in September, so regardless of when you watch it, the process is, is kind of the same, and the levels will be slightly different, but it is what it is, and it's the way that we look at stuff. And I do things slightly differently to others. I don't consider myself a pure technician. Many people will you know, be very technical about the way they approach things, but I'm very much a case of, you know, let, let's see what the chart is trying to tell us. Let's see what the price actually is trying to tell us, and then formalize that in levels, in ideas, and then come up with our very best ones. We write them down in our plan, and then we'd wait for them to occur and execute them or not, depending on what happens in the day. So let's hit the trading platform now and see what's going on. All right, guys, so here I am. I've logged into my Core Spreads Australia Core Trader 2 account, and Core Trader 2 is the account you want to use for the tightest uh, spreads. They do offer uh, MT4, but this is where you're really going to get the best spreads, and the execution is, is crisp as well. So uh, let's look at the UK 100, which is the FTSE 100 equivalent. Uh, spread on that at the moment is uh, 0.8, so pretty tight, and that's on their rolling cash. So rolling cash, don't forget, is a tight, tighter spread than the futures contract, but when you roll it, you have a cost to carry that each day. So as you roll it through the evening to the next day, there's a small charge that's made to allow you to carry that. But So it's a great day trading vehicle. No charge if you're trading it intraday. So to open my charts up, we're literally going to hit this chart uh, button here, it opens up in, 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 in within the Core Trader 2 platform. But what I like about these, I've talked about before, is you can pop them out into a new browser tab, which is what I've already done over here on my screen on the left-hand side with me. I've got the UK 100 rolling cash up, a couple of charts. But I'm gonna do the analysis within this because this is the screen I'm recording. This is one that you guys will be able to see. Okay, so. Rolling cash, uh, let's get rid of, first of all, we can trade from within the chart as well, which is a nice a one-click trade. We put our stake in here and we can hit buy or sell and we get the order confirmation pop up. But for now, we're just doing analysis, so I'm gonna turn it off so it kind of doesn't cloud what's going on. First things first, even though we are trading intraday, looking for day trading levels, I wanna have a quick look at the monthly. Anything that stands out dramatically in the month? Nothing really, we're not far off highs, but we're in a choppy bit. We've kind of pushed the lows, pushed the highs, I don't want to overdo this. There's nothing that great about it. Let's move on. Uh, but what is more interesting, guys, is you know the color of the month. So prior month, August, big red month. Didn't close on lows, but it's a big red month. September, 
Okay, we're doing all right so far. We're kind of trying, we're not as volatile, but we're trying. So let's look at the weekly. Uh, weekly, three weeks of uptrend, a lot of downtrend here. Okay, again, nothing really gonna get too carried away with this. We'll do it for day trend levels. Right, daily. This is where it starts to get more interesting. So already I can see, listen, we came off aggressively off those highs at the beginning of August, and we haven't really clawed back much. Right, so already I'm starting to think, okay, and we're really struggling at this level. First, so first thing I want to do is really want to make sure I've got a horizontal line on there because that's such a key level. Horizontal line, clicking the drawing tool here, clicking horizontal, and bang, I'm going to put this here. I'm also going to put it here. But better than that, actually, you know what? I'm going to change that because this is a bit more of a zone of interest. So let me move that. And what in my zone of interest is this, is that yes, we've got a horizontal line, but in reality, this 7300 to 7350 level is more a level of resistance. So we've got a tool for that. We can hit the drawing tool. We can go and we can hit the rectangle um, button there or menu there, whatever you want to call it. And we can do this. This is far more interesting to me because this is a key zone of interest, all right? We have pushed up multiple times to this area here. Now, we can see it's 7,300 to 7,350 approximately. And we've driven up. Now, one could say that we've bull flagged in here. And that's, I wouldn't be, it's not the best bull flag in the world because you could also argue that we're in the middle of a big bear flag here. Uh, and we've gone on for quite a long time, so that's probably negated. But what are we looking for from a day trading perspective? Well, all we can say now, guys, is that we've pushed up for multiple days, we've pulled back, and we've tried to attempt the high. So we're getting interested because actually, if we start to push through that high and fail, then that's a short opportunity. There's no doubt about it. That potentially a good, nice, a nice short opportunity or something that I would look to investigate further. Uh, saying that, we're in two days of push. If we had a, th I'm also, it would be better to have it on the third day. We've had two days. If we close here in the third day, we push up, fail, and start to rotate back. Then we can kind of look to take a trade. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the doodle tool. And they call it a doodle tool. Yeah, doodle. <laughs> we can start to look at it and say, right, well, if we get on the third day a push up and a pull back, then there's our risk there for a short trade and we can kind of look for an intraday reason to get short. So if in the morning, for example, on the third day, we started to push up, double topped and started to roll, then we can be all over that because the daily time frame is suggesting that's a three day move, it's above a high. We could easily end up putting a daily chart that has a wick to the high side and a bar to the low side. And so looking for this intraday might well be the play. So that stands out as the best one. And listen, we're not gonna go through reams and reams of setups, uh, but that looks not too bad. However, let's look on the flip side. If we thought this was a recovery and was gonna push back up, and what we could also do is we could also look at other charts as well and see uh, what's, what's the Dow doing, what's the DAX doing, if we wanted to look at that intermarket analysis. But if we wanna kind of be pure and isolate this, we could look at this. Uh, another thing that I also would like to point out, guys, is that very clearly, we can see this nice little trend line tool here. We can see that we're actually probably pulled back almost 50% of that move. Now I could use a fib for that, or I can use this trend line tool. Now the nice thing about the trend line tool is I've got it set up that it shows me the number of, of move, uh, sorry, the, the volume of move. So 10% move on the FTSE, like a 700 point move, and I can see here we've pulled back 350 odd points. So in actual fact, a 50% pullback would take us to about 350 here. Let's just double check it, seven, four, give or take. It doesn't have to be excessively accurate. So that would be a 50% pullback of that move if we had the spike up on the third day, or the three day rule spike up that started to fail, especially early in the morning. When we're starting to short stuff in the afternoon, but let's say on day three, which is saying this is day one, this is day two, whatever happens on day three, we get an early spike up that starts to hit that 350 up from the low level and then starts to exhibit some intraday weakness, then maybe we could get on it. All right, so now we're, we're picturing in our mind and theorizing an idea. Of course, we've got to have an idea where we're going to put our risk parameters, where we're going to put our stop, because ultimately, if the whole global markets are pushing higher, then this short trade is going to be a waste of time. And one thing I also am mindful of, of this short, is the fact that we've held this for so long. You know, sellers aren't really in control. So I wouldn't want to be looking for home runs on this. However, a three-day move, a little pullback, that wouldn't be a bad short opportunity potentially. So let's look for lower time frames. So I can get rid of this uh, rectangle, really no row of interest here. Um, now I'm mindful as, again of this short, of the fact that we've come to this, if I've got my doodle tool, 
uh, live again. I quite like that. This is quite a nice little tool here. I'm quite mindful of this, that we've broken under that key level there and we've done a little bit of a fake out. And also actually we've done a little bit of a fake out here, guys, from this. So I'm mindful of that. And in reality, hindsight, a better trade would have been along here with a, with a stop under here, looking for a move back to here. Now you probably wouldn't be greedy. You'd probably be saying, well, we're up these levels now. I'd take it away and then look for something else. So that'd be something. So I'm mindful to be cautious of the short, but saying that, you know, there's still enough meat to take something like a 30, 40 point move out of it. And that's what we're ultimately looking for here. So if we did get that move, let's just uh, shrink it down a touch. You know, if we did get that um, a third day move where we kind of pushed up, if I can just do this here, you know, where we kind of pushed up and failed that would look okay in this and it would still leave this this kind of uptrend intact uh so okay right so now we start to formulate the plan let's go now onto the five minute time frame let's try to remove some of these bits and pieces and i think we can uh clear everything in one handy click that's nice right so now we're in a five minute chart let's get rid of the drawing and let's zoom in out a bit so we can see what's going on so that wouldn't be too bad so i'm starting to now see where we want to get involved you know i can see that actually if we kind of pushed up to that 7350 level, if we pushed up a little bit higher, there's my short. So I'm framing it now and I'm saying, right, here's the level I wanna get involved in. Here's what I'm looking for, some kind of reversal pattern. So my reversal pattern could be a double top. It could be a kind of break to highs that fails intraday like a wick. It could be a big red candle with a catalyst. Any of those intraday reversal things that we look at, that would play into our hands at that level. Um, long wise, I feel we're quite stretched. I would probably want to be looking for a long when we kind of push right and did a lot more rotation. I feel that this perhaps is better for a short trade. Uh, and again, what I can do is I can set my alerts on the platform as it starts to get into this area, then I can look for the selling pattern. So reminder guys, it's not about hitting it short, just in the level. And by the way, this isn't a recommendation to trade. This is just kind of literally running through things and talking through things as I would look at the, at the market. So reminder, it's not a level we definitely want to get short. It's an area, but we want to see a pattern within the area. So the zone is there, but we also want to see the reversal pattern within that zone. It's not just stabbing at the zone because we still don't know where our stop would be. And we still don't know if it's going to reverse. I don't know if it does even if we do get reversal patterns while we have our stop. But the point of having the reversal pattern within the zone of interest is that then we can frame the trade, put our stop in, have some kind of target, and it becomes a little bit more structured. We enter the zone of interest. We already know from the analysis we've done, that's quite stretched. That's a level. If it does start to fake and pull back, it will put a nice wick on the daily. Everything lines up. So once we get that and we get the kind of trigger, then we might take a look to take a trade. If we don't, we carry on chugging, then that's the beauty of waiting for some kind of reversal within that zone, we'd never take it. And then we can reassess and go, well, actually, maybe we now wanna buy a pullback because it's so strong, that support and that resistance is now turned into support and, and or vice versa, depending on what we're trading. So anyway, guys, that's a kind of a rough overview of how I'd go from a top-down approach to pick a level to day trade off. Uh, hopefully that's helped. And again, this is, video is sponsored by our friends over at Core Spreads Australia. If you want to check them out, please do so because there's a link to them in the description uh, below. Go and see if they're right for you. Take care. Keep the risk managed. Bye-bye.